Today, we're going to be talking about the second most popular drink in the world, next to water. And it's not vodka, it's coffee. And we are going to be talking about coffee, not just caffeine. Because coffee is so much more than just caffeine. The idea for this video came about after talking to one of my subscribers. I had done the uh, Fantastic Lifestyle Checklist video, and I bombed horribly in the coffee department. It said I drank way too much coffee. And after talking to my subscriber, I realized that there was a lot more to coffee than meets the eye, and we really should do a video on this. So here it is. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50, and today we are going to talk about the pros and cons of drinking coffee. One of the pros is antioxidants. The antioxidants that are in coffee aren't the same as the ones that are in fruits and vegetables, but they still do us a lot of good. As a matter of fact, because of these antioxidants, it reduces our odds of getting diabetes by 27%. Now, it's important to note here that these antioxidants are also in decaf coffee, because if you already suffer from diabetes, the caffeine in coffee can raise glucose and insulin levels in the body, and that would be detrimental to someone who already has diabetes. So you're better off having decaf coffee in that case. It's also important to note, a lot of people likes to put sweeteners in their coffee. And we're talking about black coffee here, because those sweeteners, when it comes to diabetes, totally negate the positive effects of drinking coffee when it comes to lowering your risk. Drinking coffee protects our brains. Studies have shown that long-term moderate coffee drinkers, and by moderate, we mean people who don't drink any more than five cups a day, have lower risk of getting dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. And as we age, we want to make sure that we are not only protecting our bodies, but we're protecting our minds. There was this Harvard study that was done in 2015 that found that moderate coffee drinkers were less apt to die from any cause than non-coffee drinkers. And this included heart disease and stroke. The reason for this is connected to phytochemicals. These phytochemicals that are found in coffee reduce inflammation in the body, and that has a positive effect on your heart. Of course, as always, there's a disclaimer. If you are anxiety prone, or you already have heart disease, or you're one of these people that genetically are just slow to be able to process caffeine, then you are better off drinking decaf coffee in order to take advantage of these phytochemicals and antioxidants that are found in coffee. Is coffee good for your gains? Pre-workouts are one of the most popular selling supplements, but you don't even need to go to the supplement store to get a good pre-workout. You just need to have a couple cups of coffee before you go train. It will encourage your body to burn fat for energy, increases your metabolism, and reduces perceived exertion so you'll be able to train longer and harder with what will feel like is less effort. So you can see, drinking coffee has a lot of health advantages but it affects everyone a little bit differently. So you need to take a look at it and see how it affects you personally and adjust accordingly. So this is Lawrence from Fit and 50. Keep working out, keep having fun, enjoy that Java in moderation, and we'll talk to you again in that next video.